This is part one of our neighborhood map composition. We're gonna need pencils, we might need an eraser, and since this is a map, we're also gonna need a ruler. Maps use symbols. So we're gonna use symbols to represent all of the objects in our design. To start this composition, we're gonna place our home in about the center of the paper. It's easier to start with that in the center and then work our way out. A square is the symbol for my house. If you live in a building, you might use a rectangle or a different shape to represent the shape of your building. Since square represents house, it's also gonna represent all the other houses that are nearby. So my house is one house in a row of houses that are of similar size. So I'm gonna use the exact same square. If I came upon a house that was larger or smaller, I would adjust the size of the shapes accordingly. Along this row of houses is the street. The street is usually fairly precise. So this side of the street is gonna stop right here because there's a house right here on the corner. And then the street turns that way. And I'm glad the street turned here because it add, gives us an opportunity to add something different. Right now we're working on large structures that are gonna guide our composition. So behind my house is a creek. Some people might call it a ditch. I'm gonna call it a creek. And it comes from the trees, out from the trees, and then it curves and goes back away. Just like so. This is the basic layout of the map. This is not a lot of shapes. So now I'm gonna start thinking of other things around my neighborhood that I can include with a new symbol. So this is my house. I'm gonna create kind of like a wobbly circle to represent a tree. So there are trees that line this whole street. And that's gonna give me the chance to start adding things to this side. All right, from here, there's also a path so we're gonna let that path come across here. And then there are more trees. It's not vital that this map is 100% accurate. It's just the inspiration for our artwork. So I'm gonna start adding some smaller trees around. There are actually a lot of trees around this little creek ditch. And this is an area where the general idea of what it looks like is good enough. This is a wooded area. I did not count all the trees back there. So I'm just making my best representation of what it looks like to me. And I believe I need to move this a little bit because I remembered there's something else back here. There's another one of these paths over here. So just remember, you can make changes as you need. And it doesn't have to be 100% accurate because we aren't actually making a map to use as a map. We are using the map as a guide for creating an interesting artwork. And sometimes it's nice to use real life inspiration to construct your composition. I just remembered a few more trees that I know exactly where they are, right there. And something similar happens down here. I believe there's also a tree right here now that I think about it. And then smaller ones right here. This is the end of part one. We've laid out the composition for our artwork. 
I hope you come back for part two, and I will see you next time. Bye.